Hey, it's Maximo and welcome to Maximo's Travels. In today's video, I'll be exploring the port of Ketchikan on our seven night Holland America cruise to Alaska. I'll be taking a walk through town, exploring the old red light district of Creek Street and exploring Ketchikan's inner harbor. After we sail away, we'll see spectacular views of Alaska's inside passage and magnificent sunsets. Join me. We've been sailing on Holland America's New Amsterdam for one and a half days. Early on day three, we arrived in Ketchikan. If you'd like to see a review of our experiences as a first time cruiser on Holland America's New Amsterdam, please check out the video in the Alaskan Cruise playlist. Ketchikan was the first port that we stopped on our cruise. We hadn't planned any excursions, but if you were planning one, my pick would be the Misty Fjords and Wilderness Explorer Cruise. This cost about 225 US dollars and is about six hours. We arrived in port shortly before 7 a.m. The sky was dark and broody. The low cloud touched the tops of the low nearby hills of Ketchikan. The ship docked opposite the main street of Ketchikan. Quite impressive, really. We had some breakfast and then disembarked the ship and had a look around Ketchikan. The Tongas Training Company is a very large souvenir shop. I bought a number of fridge magnets, t-shirts, hats from here and the prices were quite reasonable. And then we wandered around the streets of Ketchikan, went into a few stores and just checked out uh, the vibe of the uh, town.
It was very interesting learning about the history of Ketchikan, the Alaskan Gold Rush, and the fact that uh, Creek Street used to be a, a red light district and the Married Man's Trail, the path for married men to escape getting caught by police after prostitution was made illegal in 1953. After Creek Street, we walked a short way to Thomas Basin. This is basically an inner harbour and marina that was completed in only 1933. It's not until you're actually in Alaska that you realise how young the state and all the facilities and towns there actually are. It was quite interesting to get a glimpse of how the locals lived. It was also a fantastic vantage point to check out all the cruise ships that were docked in the port of Ketchikan. quite lucky with the weather. It was quite gloomy and overcast but we managed to avoid any rain. It was only about 12 or 13 degrees Celsius but with the right layers and clothing it was very comfortable walking around the town. We were both feeling the effects of the virus that we were trying to get over so we made a beeline back to the ship. We went to the crow's nest which offered a perfect vantage point of all the other cruise ships as well as the port of Ketchikan. If you're coming to Ketchikan, there's plenty of things you can do. There's four wheel driving, there's uh, either plane or ferry ride to the Misty Fjords. You can go to the Totem Pole Park. You need to do your research. We weren't feeling that well, so it's lucky that we had nothing planned other than a stroll around town. We were in port for about eight hours and at 3 p.m we sailed away to our next destination, the port of Juneau, 297 kilometres further north. As we sailed away from Ketchikan, the cloud cover broke and it turned into a spectacularly nice sunny day. We sat out on our balcony and just watched the world sail by. The scenery of the inside passage is absolutely spectacular. And I don't know why, but the sunsets at sea, especially in Alaska, are to die for. They're just so moody and the fact that this was taken around about 11 p.m. at night made it all that more special. I do hope you liked this video. If so, please hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notify bell so you'll never miss another upcoming video. If you'd like to support my channel, please consider buying me a coffee or smashing that super thanks button. And look out for our forthcoming videos covering all our excursions and the sights and sounds and animals that we saw on our cruise. Until next time, you take care and bye now. Mm -hmm.